This is Volunteer Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on seven years of social security net through affordable insurance schemes and guaranteed pension schemes. The participants are Sharad Kohli, economic analyst, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. The three social security schemes of the government, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bima Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bima Yojana, and Atam Pension Yojana were launched by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi 9th May 2015, exactly seven years before. Can you tell us, Sharadji, what were the major objectives behind launching these three schemes and how do you see the seven-year journey? Well, I think, you know, if you look at the social security, which was so much being talked about in India ever since independence, I think social security is something when we compare ourselves with the developed world, I think one stalking difference which comes out in social security where in the developed world, people get social security after they retire or probably when they are not there to their dependents and so on and so forth. So this was being debated in the country for a very, very long time. That time when the current government came into power in 2014, I think the thought process had started at that very time. And for those thoughts to crystallize, I think it didn't take very long. In about a year's time, we saw the launch of these three schemes. And I think all the three schemes have been extremely successful. I mean, for example, if you look at the Pradhan Mantri, Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, it's called more popularly known by their abbreviation PM, JJBY. So if we take the latest data available is of 27th April, total enrollments in the scheme, they speak volumes of the success, 12.76 crore people being enrolled. And I think 11,522 crore total claims have been paid. And the number of claims is also more than 5.75 lakh. And if we just take the COVID time, because unfortunately, there were a lot of deaths during COVID. If you only take COVID, so total of 2,10,000 claims have been paid during COVID itself. And 4,194 crore rupees have been distributed as claims. And the best part is that the settlement rate, because in an insurance scheme, normally, you know, the questions are raised about the settlement and how much settlement has been done. Because a lot of people, we keep hearing about how the insurance schemes by private insurers or otherwise that claims don't get settled. People have to run from pillar to post to get the claims. Whereas in this case, the settlement rate was 99.72%, which is phenomenal, I would say. And then likewise, when you look at the Pradhan Mantri, Suraksha Bhima Yojana, even that has now 28.37 crore enrollments, which is, I think, again, a huge success. This is also, as on uh, 27th April, the last collected data. And the total amount of 1,930 crores has been disbursed with about more than 97,000 claims. And same goes for Atal Pension Yojana. If we talk of Atal Pension Yojana, you will find that uh, 4 crore people have enrolled in this pension yojana. I think all said and done, the schemes have provided a comprehensive social security, I would say, backbone to the country. And in a country where 90% or more of people are in unorganized sector, I think such kind of scheme was an absolute imperative. There was a scheme. This should have been brought many, many, many years ago before 2015. But, I mean, thanks to this government that it brought it soon as it came into power. And I think the schemes are doing very well. If you go to the ground level and talk to the rural households, talk to the people who had no social security whatsoever, you will find that they bless the government for this. However, I would like to say something that the scheme was launched in 2015. And for example, in the Pradhan Mantri Bhima Yojana, the total claim amount is 2 lakhs. So what I would like to put this as a suggestion before the government also, because the scheme was launched in 2015. We are into 2022. So I think the inflationary effect should be added to the scheme. So 2 lakhs maybe in 2015 was an X amount. But if you take the same 2 lakhs today, because of the inflationary impact, you might find that 2 lakhs falling a bit short in terms of as you compare it to 2015. So that's my only humble suggestion that if this amount can be enhanced a bit by accounting for the inflationary effect, I think the scheme will become even more fruitful, even more relevant, and I think it will find more takers as well. And Sharaji, what do you feel about the role of banks, post offices, and insurance companies' implementation of this scheme so successfully all through the country? And what do you feel are the challenges ahead in increasing the, the coverage net of these schemes? If you ask me, the backbone of the scheme has been Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana. Because the financial inclusion launched by the government to have, and you know, when these bank accounts were being opened, the critics, they said, of what use is the bank account 
when you don't have any money in it because these were the accounts of the people who never in their life had had bank accounts in fact going to a bank for them was considered as an elite activity it was considered as only rich people can go to bank i think that notion was completely changed transformed after the launch of jandhan scheme and because a prerequisite for these schemes is that you got to have a savings bank account either in a bank or you can go through the post office so i think post office and the banks to answer your question very precisely have been the fulcrum of these schemes i mean the schemes are running on the basis of savings account and post office accounts because that is a prerequisite for the scheme to be availed by the people of the country the sm yendala sita raman said that these low cost insurance schemes and the guaranteed pension scheme are ensuring that financial security which was available for a select few earlier on a, a broader note does enrolling in the scheme increase the confidence of the people do you feel it makes them feel secure and hence increases the overall uh, happiness quotient productivity quotient in the country absolutely without a doubt i mean if i know today that who is going to probably fund me when i retire when i'm 50 today i may be working take for example a village laborer who's working on a field now he's working on probably 500 rupees a day or 600 rupees a day or 400 rupees a day till the time he keeps earning he's fine but god forbid something happens tomorrow let's assume hypothetically although it should never happen with anyone let's assume there is an accident and suddenly this person becomes he loses an arm or he becomes disabled for any reason unfortunately that is where the scheme the second one the pradhan mantri bima suraksha yojana comes to your rescue but if everything goes okay maybe he can work till he's 50 55 60 but then body starts taking toll i mean the body starts going old so he wonders that i am a laborer earning every day i make my living i go to my fields i make those 500 rupees when i come back and you know there are hardly any savings because he spends everything on his family on so many other things now what happens when i won't be able to work that is how social security is understood because tomorrow when he is feeble when he is weak he is not able to work when his body doesn't support him what happens to him at that time i think this is where social security comes into picture when you'll not be able to survive with money you will not have money to coming regularly into your bank account in the form of cash or whatever that is how these schemes work and you know a case in point could be let's say for example we pick up one of the schemes i think the scheme by character explains benefit it gives the pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana is for people who are between 18 to 50 and i think you can extend it up to 50 55 years you get a life cover of 2 years and imagine the kind of premium that is paid i mean you are basically paying 1 rupee rather less than 1 rupee a day i mean 1 rupee a day is something i mean these days so sharaji to put things in perspective how would that compare with insurance company lic or any other general insurance company how would that compare the points of comparison are very very glaring the biggest point of comparison here first of all is the cost as i said 1 rupee a day no insurance company private or any other because this is funded by government this is run by the pension fund regulatory and development authority under the aegis of national pension scheme so of course api apy is run by national pension scheme so i think because this is a government administered government monitored government launch scheme so the cost has been kept as negligible so i think the first difference comparison if you ask me is in terms of cost and second major difference which i would like to highlight here and this is very very important for our listeners to know that in the atal pension yojana the apy as it's popularly called you get pension of 1000 2000 3000 4000 up to 5000 rupees because these funds are then because these are calculation says you contribute a minimum of 42 rupees every month and based on your contribution you know your pension amount is decided now the best part which i was going to highlight here is that these funds are invested as we all know that all pension funds are invested in securities in bonds partly in stock markets and other avenues in case the return coming from that corpus is fall short in terms of the pension being given to the beneficiary government will compensate that shortfall to make sure that you get your 1000 2000 3000 4000 5000 whatever table you fall into whatever has been your contribution you would be getting that guaranteed amount so if there's a shortfall in the in the return being generated by the corpus government will step in it will uh, treat it as an expenditure and it will make sure that that amount is given to the beneficiary that is the beauty of the scheme i found out of all the three schemes the best part i found was the cost the cost is negligible 1 rupee a day is, and for the pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana 
the cost is 12 rupees i mean you can imagine 12 rupees you get an accident cover ability as well partial ability cover is 1 lakh if you if by any means god forbid you become fully disabled you get a cover of 2 lakh rupees and the premium amount is automatically debited from your bank account so i think cost is the biggest advantage second advantage is this is government sponsored there is no question of your running from pillar to post to see that somebody has run away or the insurance company doesn't exist today and so on and so forth and the third major benefit is that government is guaranteeing every single benefit which is derived out of these schemes sharath you feel that there is a great scope for the comparatively privileged people by way of say education or economic status uh, to supplement the efforts of the government and help the lesser privileged in their neighborhood their offices uh, by making them aware of the benefits of these schemes as you have so beautifully outlined here and encourage more and more people to enroll who haven't yet enrolled in these schemes Well I must tell you that in the Ministry of Finance there is a financial inclusion department I have had the privilege of meeting uh, some of the top officials of the financial inclusion department and I have interacted with them I spoken to them and I have been told and which I have seen on the ground as well that there are teams who are going to the remotest part of the country of course akashwani all india radio is the most prevalent and the most widely reached medium but then there may be people who may be missing out programs like this or who may not be able to listen to it so the teams are personally going they are calling the village panchayat they are going at the block level they are going at the sectoral level they are going at the rural level to try and educate people to come forward and take the benefit of the scheme which is why we see more than 28 crore enrollment and i think the biggest propaganda is word of mouth when you find the the mukhiya of the village he is subscribed to the screen next time when the panchayat happens he is going to let the entire village know that look i am just paying 1 rupee a day and i am getting a cover of 2 lakh rupees now these people may also be having the some of these people let's not forget that these schemes are open to every indian citizen they are not restricted to a few so there may be a chance that you may already be holding another insurance scheme from a private insurer or from lic but this can be supplemented with that but what is to be kept in mind is if you need to take the benefit in both the schemes that is in pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti and in pradhan mantri bima suraksha you should be having two different savings account because in one savings account you can only subscribe to one scheme so i think this needs to be noted by all the listeners every indian citizen is eligible to subscribe irrespective of the fact whether you have any other insurance cover you are insured with any other insurance company private or public whatsoever Shall we say the period of uh, annual insurances of uh, 1st June to 31st May? Uh, people who are eligible and not yet availing it, uh, they can enroll uh, for these uh, Jan Suraksha schemes from approaching 1st June 2022. Absolutely, they can. They are very much eligible to enroll. All they need to do is to approach their. They, they can go to their post office or they can go to the bank. Every bank, scheduled bank, which is recognized by the three schemes. you can approach the bank there is a form they will take your basic details i'm explaining the process to make it easy for the listeners so you approach the bank they'll make you fill up a form they will take down your account number and all you need to do is to sign a mandate which authorizes the bank to auto debit that 1 rupee a month so some of the people i spoke about pradhan mantri bima suraksha they were the beneficiaries they said we didn't even know that when this amount was granted it was such a tiny amount it is less than 30 rupees a month for the pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti so it's 330 a year so you can imagine it comes to less than 30 rupees per month so they said we never felt because even for somebody who's earning 10000 rupees a month i really don't think 30 contributing 30 rupees or 1 rupee is going to pinch the person so i think the cost has been particularly kept so that it reaches across all sections of society to my mind if you ask me having spoken of the cost i think the schemes are almost free to all citizens of the country Thank you so much Charji for this discussion and uh, throwing light on the various aspects of these three flagship social sector schemes which have completed 7 years and we hope to see more uh, milestones being crossed in the future thank you thank you you were listening to a discussion on 7 years of social security net through affordable insurance schemes and guaranteed pension schemes the participants were Sharath Kohli economic analyst and Sonu Sood AIR correspondent This program is produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com.